Welcome to Shul.com. Good morning, guys. It is uh, Yom Rishon, Sunday, Parashat Lech Lecha, but we're going to actually talk a little bit about Noach. Um, over Shabbat and over the last week, we did a lot of research about Noach, about his time, what was going on, and some of the uh, inter- interesting things has allowed me to repaint the picture of what was the world like at the time of Noach. Why did Noah, why did Noach, why was he unsuccessful in convincing anybody to come along with him on the Teva? You know, it's a very interesting question. I mean, you know, Noach was not a nobody. He was a well-known and very important person in um, in this society. So, first, let's paint a little bit of a picture. The world that we know today is not the world that existed at the time of Noach. According to some of the Mefarshim, there was no mountains or valleys before the time of Noach. Before the Mabul, the earth was just one piece of land. It's something they called Panagia. You might have heard of it in... in uh, and maybe in school, where the, if you look at the continents today, they're all pieces that can all be put together with each other. There was, it w- and according to some of the Mifarshim, there's a lot of arguments on this. Um, when the world was originally created, it was one season throughout the whole year, beautiful weather. It would rain once every 40 years. People didn't have to work the land in, in difficulty. It does say that the land was cursed, where they would plant one item and a different product would come out. But at the same time, the ability to travel the world was very easy. It was also a flat plain. Like I said, I was telling you, there's no mountains, no valleys. So a person can technically, he can conquer the whole world. It was very easy to get around. Uh, what else? The weather patterns. There was no four seasons. It was just one weather. Like I told you, beautiful springtime the whole year. And these type of things affected the mankind. This along with, within the third generation after Adam, you had Adam. He was Oved Hashem. Then you have Shit, his son, Oved Hashem. But on the third generation, they start to rebel. They start to uh, worship the stars, the galaxies, the constellations, and the planets. And the question is, why? And why would they worship these things? Did they not see Adam Arishon? He was literally created with the hands of God from, from the Afar. And suddenly, literally, the grandchildren already observing and saying that the Saturn and, and Neptune and if the star and the moon is like this that means that it's going to affect so we have to understand that these individuals were not stupid they were very very intelligent in fact they know more about the world than we know about the world today they understood how the world functioned they understood also that the stars and the, and the constellations affect the things that are happening on earth we, we know this on a small level like you know when there's a full moon the tide sometimes rises or certain fish or, or species act differently. There are connections between these things. Some people are, are more well-versed in than others. And there's astronomy, there's astrology. So they became so well-versed in it, they were able to actually tell the future. And they were able to determine a lot of things to the level that even Noah himself was knowledgeable in this. And we're going to read from this Gemara that even Abraham Avinu was knowledgeable. And when God tells Abraham, you're going to have children, he answers him back. He goes, how? He goes, I understand the constellations. I know where my mazal is. It's not humanly possible. I, I, I learned this chokhmah and this wisdom. Now, that was Abraham. That was 10 generations after Noah. You could imagine. Noah knew the, the, the science much better. He understood this. And even, even the Mefarshim in some places write, he was, he was weak in his imunah. To some extent. And Noah is a big Sadiq. We only have good things to say about Noah, but when the Hakim said Ketani Amana, why? Why why did he suddenly have, have some weakness in it? It's because even though Noah was hearing it from God and building the Teva, he was looking at the stars and he didn't see any flood coming. There was no sign of a flood coming in the constellations. And even the individuals of his generation, which knew this knowledge, told him, Where do you see that? They were questioning him and saying, Listen, you're telling us there's going to be a flood? Fine. We know what's going to be the future. Take a look at the stars. Look at how they're aligning themselves. Look at what's happening. So if you see a flood, where do you see it? No, actually. Did they believe in God? The other people? So they believed um, in God, but they believed God had created these constellations and put the constellations in charge. That was their mistake. They, they, they didn't... When they rebelled against God, it's not that they didn't believe that God existed. They knew God created the world. It would have been foolish for them to say God didn't create the world. Adam was still around. What do you mean God didn't create the world? Where do you think I came from? I don't have Adam a. Adam was still around. Adam was still around, and, and the, the, uh, for some time he was. But it was the I'm talking about the third generation of uh, after Shit. 
when the, his, the grandchildren of Adam, he was around, and the grandchildren were already a bit rebelling. And they started to build these uh, type of hechalot, these type of st- uh, stone structures to worship these uh, constellations, which they saw as gods. And Hashem, that part upset Hashem. But the part that upset Hashem the most was that the people were stealing from each other in, in immorality. They were going with married women, with married men. Uh, they were going men with men, women with women. That upset God more than, the, than they rebelled against Him. How do I know that? Because in Parashat Noah, you have to have Dora Palaga. Dora Palaga is after Noah gets off the Teva. The entire world is speaking one language, Lashon HaKodesh. Everyone is a one language tongue. And there's also another language around it's Aramit. I know it's Aramit because the, the Svarim write that Adam Arishon also spoke Aramit. So there's two languages. Why? This, this Lashon HaKodesh and Aramit. It seems that Aramit is a uh, holy language. It has Kiddushah to it. And it's also awkward because it's a language that the Malachim don't like. The Malachim understand all the languages. But when it comes to Aramit, it's a language that they understand, but they don't like it. And in this Kakim. They don't like getting associated because it's like it takes Hebrew and it mixes it, and so. Uh, it, it's so when would they speak what? So they spoke Hebrew and Lashon Hakodesh, and they spoke also Aramit. But when would they use each one? Oh, I don't know when, but it does say in Rashi that everyone spoke Lashon Hakodesh. But we know Adam spoke Aramit, definitely Metushelach, definitely Noach, and there were, I'm sure there were others. But who amongst them? And we also know that in time of Abraham Avinu, in Adam Naharaim. They also spoke Aramit. Aramit was the la- was a very important language. Now, at the time of pa- Dora Palaga, what happened was th- everyone was speaking this one language, and um, they all decided that they're going to build a tower to go where to the Rakia. If you look in the in the Sfarim, it says they wanted to build it to go up to the firmament, not the Shamaim. I-, I know that some places mention Shamaim, but if you look if you look in a couple. The, oh, so there's a difference between the Shamaim and the firmament. The, the Shamaim is above the firmament. The firmament is, is a firm, uh, clear piece that's above the earth that can't be penetrated. It's called the firmament. Now, it, it, this could be questioned because you look on science today. Can they leave the atmosphere or not? I don't know. I can't answer because I've never left the earth. I've never seen this the firmament. The level of oxygen drops dramatically when you pass the firmament. So what to the modern or to the, I guess, the ancient, it, it's much harder to pierce that and still survive. So I guess the concept is you, you go over that and then you see whatever. That's like extraterrestrial. That's not maybe they have technology. Well, well, they definitely had they definitely had knowledge of how to do things that we don't know how to do today. Right. That's for sure. And they also knew how to do uh, types of meditation to leave their bodies and and go places. Why do they want to go up? Um, also, so the the reason why is they were worried that because God destroyed the world with a flood, they said if they can build a tower large enough, they won't be able to um, drown or get flooded, and they wanted to physically challenge God. But God's not physical, so. But at the same time, but didn't God say He's not going to bring another flood? Yeah, but at the same time, they insurance policy. They, 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 you could say insurance. You have to remember these people were challenging God, so I mean they're probably challenging Him on that too. Um, that on the on those statements too, they weren't. They weren't. But at the same, you have to remember these people again were not stupid. They were doing something that we don't understand. You understand? We're saying like, what are they building a tower to, to, to challenge God? What, is, what does that mean? Uh, that doesn't make sense. So they were obviously building something that could have challenged God to some extent, not in the real sense, but something that's much more complicated than we are simply being uh, 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 understanding and being told from the story. There was something else going on there, and it was so important. God had to reassess the whole world, all languages, and spread everybody apart to do this. Now, what's interesting is God didn't destroy them. When it came to the time of Noah, they were stealing from each other and immorality. God said, I can't have this around in my world. You can't steal from each other and you guys don't, are not, not with each other. I can't have it. When it came to the time of Pelaga, when they were challenging him, they were saying they don't believe in God, they want to fight him. God said, I'll leave them around because they have peace amongst them. And... It's a huge lesson. It goes to show you that when you have achdut amongst a group and, and everyone respects each other, it doesn't mean you all have to agree with each other, but there's a mutual respect. It's unbelievable. Even during the, even during the time of the king Achab, which is a rasha, and there's a whole machloket in the Gemara, uh, whether he has uh, 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 olam haba, we had, there was Achab, there was Menashe, and there was Yeravam, Ben Nevat. And the Gemara talks about it with the whole story of Rav Asheh, 
when he spoke about Menashe, he called him his friend, Haver. And uh, then he came to him in a dream at night, the king Menashe told him, Rav Ashe, why did you call me your friend? I'm not your friend. I'm not your friend. I'm not your father's friend. Why are you calling me this? And he said, not only am I not your friend, he said to him, where, where did you, uh, when you make hamotzi on the bread, where do you break the piece off? He said, I don't know. He said, you break it from the area that's the most baked. Remember we learned this? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he took it from the most baked, and he said, oh, he said, okay, tomorrow I'm going to say it in your name. And at the end of the, the Gemara, he calls him his rabbi, not his friend. And we, we discussed that, that whole Gemara. It's a very interesting Gemara. But what we, we see from this is we don't really understand a lot of these, these stories. You know, sometimes we, uh, we have to be careful when we talk about these people. You understand? And I was reading last night in the Otsar Eshiah Tanakh how Noah died 10 years after the Palaga. After they built this structure, 10 years later, he passed away. And he was able to see that from his children and grandchildren came 70 languages and nations that all developed themselves. You know, it gave him a lot of peace of mind because remember, Noah saw the world before, he saw it destroy, he saw the new world after. The new world had four seasons. The new world, people were allowed to eat meat, they were not allowed to eat meat before. They were all vegetarians. They all lived very long lives before Noah. After Noah, it started to shorten itself. There were huge giants before the time of Noah. After Noah, they were still giants, but there were much fewer of them. Og, I was reading last night that Og Melech Habashan, uh, he held on to the uh, Teva and Noah, and he promised to be the slave of the children of Noah if he fed him and he fed him. It also says that Noah tied the Teva uh, with a, uh, a string or a chain actually to the Karne Re'em. The Re'em is a species that there's only two of them in the world, one male, one female, and they are tremendously huge. When they move it creates earthquakes. There's one in the east, one in the west, one male, one female. It's a, it's a huge, it's called the Re'em. It's, it's even bigger than a dinosaur, and it says that Noah tied the Teva to it because the Re'em is a kosher animal. Uh, obviously, there wasn't seven in the world, I guess, so they only, t- they only took one with him. So it's, it's, it's very... The, this, were there dinosaurs? So, um, listen, I was not there, I can't tell you, but there were Taninim Gedolim, and it could have been that dinosaurs was a crossbreed of other species. It could have been that that was the Nachash Kadmon. That was the way the old snake. There's a couple of... Uh, the Kadmon is the snake when it had legs. So if you, look at some, if you look at some of these dinosaurs, it looked like a snake with huge legs. It could have been the Kadmon. Oh, that told Chava to eat from the tree? Yeah, it could have been Taninia Megidolim. It could have also been one of the species that God maybe uh, originally created and then they crossbred them and then it was part of the... There's a lot of species that didn't make it on the Teva. How do we know? Because when, it, when the, the, the animals came to the Teva, the Teva evaluated whether or not they made an avera. You know what this tells you? It tells you that Noah knew how to build a structure out of wood, whether it was cedar wood, according to some opinions, acacia wood, according to others, gofed, or atzeeres, atzeshitim, whatever it was that they, that they bring down. But he knew how to build a structure out of wood that this structure would not accept something that was tum'ah, had, 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 had tum'ah on it, had any impurity. We don't understand what, how this works. We, what do you mean? You can build a structure that rejects people from coming in? Yeah, he knew how to put energies into the Teva that when it came something of, of impurity, it, it would reject it. It would not be able to come into the door. And I'm sure there were animals that attempted to come in that were not... You know, listen, the animals were not stupid. It says animals know when, it's, when earthquakes are going to come. They know when certain natural disasters or hurricanes, you know, they start to run around, they go to circles, they still bark. They'll, they'll do certain things that they knew. The animals knew something was coming. And I'm sure many of them came and wanted to come into Teva, and, and Noah had to evaluate whether or not they were pure or not. And this was one of the complaints of the Orev. What was the complaint of the Orev, the crow? The Orev said, why are you sending me out to go check now if there's, if there's any land? What was his claim? He said, he said you, have, you took from all the kosher birds seven of each, seven male, seven female. I'm only one male, one female of the crow. So, he said, so the crow was telling Noah, I don't get it. Either you're trying to take my wife. What do you mean he was trying to take my wife when it came to the crow? The crow knew what the world was like before the time of Noah. Because he, he came on the Teva from the, before the time of Noah. So he saw how humans went with animals and with birds. And they, and they uh, tried to cross a breed. So, but he was a good crow. 
How do we know he was a good crow? He was the only crow chosen to come on. So before we knock the crow, let's take a look and evaluate. He was the only one, and he had a claim. He said, no, I'll send one of the kosher ones. He said, because he said, if I end up getting hurt, no, alenu. Uh, when I go out from the teva, the sun, or it's too cold, too hot, or it drowns, he said, there's going to be no more crows in the world. Son, one of the kosher birds, you have another six more left per gender. You understand? And then he had another complaint on, but, Rash, uh, but uh, what's his name? Noach didn't buy it. Noach said he's a big rasha. He didn't, didn't, didn't buy it. And, and right away he cursed him. He didn't care. Noach, Noach at the end had no patience with this nonsense. Really, it came to this, he cursed him nothing and right when it came to, I mean, his son and grandson ca- uh, castrating or sodomizing, whatever it was, he cursed him too. At the end of his life, Noah, after being on the Teva for a year with the animals, yeah. he became a different person. It does, <laughs> he became a different person. When he came out, you know, it even says he was Oved Hashem, but he needed, he needed to have some form of a release. He went, to, he planted himself a vineyard, he made himself a uh, wine, not to, I remember Noach is a each Sadiq Tamim. You have to remember the level of Noach. There's nobody that ever reached those words in the Torah. Doesn't say on anybody else. Each Sadiq Tamim, nobody. Doesn't say on anybody. And we always hold of the opinion. Tamim is like perfection. It, there's different levels of Sadiq. There's Tamim. It's even a higher level where it's Tamimut even with Hashem. And Was Yosef Tamim? Um, I don't know if it doesn't say on, on Yosef that he's oh, Tamim. I, I don't think it says Sadiq either on Yosef. On Yosef? I don't think it's it only on Noah, if I'm not mistaken. We can, we, we can check it out. I think in the Torah it doesn't say on it. We'll, we'll double check it when we look and, and, and we, can, we can take a look at it inside. But it's really, really Noah's the only one. And don't forget, he's the father of every human being that exists on earth today, with the exception, unless Og Melech Abbashan had children. It's possible. Why did he have Schut to make the table? What do you mean? Why didn't Hashem kill him? No, because he found them. He said, Ki sadiq b- I saw that you were righteous in my generation. So he, and he had a prophecy, Noah had a prophecy that he was going to survive. And in the back of his mind, he tried to convince the others, but they were mivazim. No, he's asking about Og. Yeah. So why oh, why, why did Og have it? Oh, yeah. that's a very good question. Well, look, he need, Abraham Mavin needed him. So, so you know what? He had, he had <clears throat> no, so we, we know in the future. Well, first, we know that Og was a giant. And um, he, he, Og also has a brother. His brother is Sichon Melech Mori. It's Og Melech Bashan Sichon Melech Mori. But it's a good question. Why did God save Og? Now, we could say maybe because later on, because Abraham Avinu, that was, so he also promised to be the slave for Noah and his children. And Og was a giant. Og was a very fearful person, a very powerful person, to the level that uh, even Moshe Rabbeinu was fearful of Og. When he saw Og and Sichon, those nations and the giants, he, like he prayed to God. Even Moshe is like, whoa, this is, uh, it's like, how are we going to... And Moshe Rabbeinu we're talking about. But you know what? We went into Og. I don't mind looking up Og. This, uh, we, have the, we have the book here. It's Otsar Ishiya Tanakh. It's from Yishai Hasida. Let's look up Og. Let's take a look at him because, you know, it's interesting. Why did God save Og? You know, it's a, it's an interesting. Also, another question in Bereshi, doesn't it say after Adam sinned that he's only going to live 120 years from now? On people. Okay, so that people are still living long. Yeah, so people could still live over 120 years, and in fact, there are people that have lived and that are around today. I don't know about around no, today if they might have passed away. Times, people are still living. In yeah, no. So that 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 120 was also set over in Devarim with Moshe Rabbeinu. It was talking about like the average extended life would be 120. It's not to say that and they can't. They say Ham Kaduri. Ham Kaduri lived 127. If you add it up from the time he was born, when he was, when um, uh, you know the Brit Milav, the Benish Hai, the Sandak, or whatever it was, they added up. They said it was 120. There are people that live over 120 years. Yeah, these guys were living till 600. No, so after the uh, after Noah, it started to go down gradually. It's not that it ended 120. 120 was in the time of Div- in Divadim that uh, that it, it might when it originally when uh, we see it in the um, in the Chumash, it it comes it comes up in Bereshit, but the in Devarim, it's the main time when Moshe Rabbeinu he's he's bringing it down from Moshe and. It's not saying that we're not going to go over 120. It's saying that that's going to be the average extended life 
that God's no longer going to allow people to see as many generations as they as they did in the past. Mm -hmm. But let's look it up over here, on, and also on Og, and we'll check it out. And then my, and another, another question, so I don't forget, is why didn't Metushala uh, talk to Noah about getting into the Teva? Why didn't he want to go into the Teva? He died, Metushala. Yeah, but they knew when he was going to die. He knew no. when he was going to die. No, so that's actually what the people of the generation made fun of him about, is that he was telling them, you see, it's, it's here, it's in... in Let's open this up. It's that he was telling everyone there's going to be Mabul, right? And there's going to be a huge flood. And they were all laughing at him, telling him there's going to be no flood. And if there's going to be a flood, there's going to be a flood on his house. Then, a week before the Mabul, Metushelach dies. And Metushelach is the biggest Sadiq. He lives 969 years. And everyone knew he was a big Sadiq. He was very righteous. And he, what do you mean? Why what? Why was he righteous? He was he still Veda Hashem. What do you mean? He was Veda Hashem. It was known. Everybody knew he was a righteous person. But the problem was when he died, everyone started laughing at Noah even more. They'd be like, You're told us it's gonna be Mabu, look at that. Uh, uh, your your biggest righteous most righteous person in your family, the grandpa, but just passed away. So the Mabu is only on on him. So they were Mibazeh him, left and right. And even though it says here in Bereshit Vav yeah, but Hashem waited for him to die and then waited another week after. It says, shana. Let's look, take a look here. That he's only going to be 120 years. Let's look at Rashi. Ad kuf chaf, which is 120 shana. api. I will have on them um, my api, like my rage or my anger. lo yashuvu. Avi alehim mabul, and if they're not going to make the shuvah, I'm going to bring on them a mabul. Ve'im toman mishenolad yefet ad mabul eno ela mea shana. And if you're going to say from the time of yefet until the mabul it was only a hundred years from the time it was born, en mukdamu meuchar b'torah. There's no early and there's no late in the Torah. That's talking specifically in each one of the books, not in the Torah itself. Meaning from Bereshit to Bereshit, not from Bereshit to Shemot. Okay. This Gezerah that he was going to bring the Mabul was 20 years before Noah had any children. And okay, so what it says here, the, when it's saying that the, the uh, years of a person will be 120 years, one of the Mepharshim is explaining that that will be 120 years until the Mabul is going to come. Now, it also brings down here, So after, um, after Noah, uh, after this Pasuk here with Noah, what ends up happening in the land is there's Nephilim. Who are these Nephilim? And there's also Bnei Elohim. It's these people that are the children of the Lord. What are these people? Let's take a look at Rashi. It's all very interesting. Nephilim. Al-Shem shenaflu v'hipilu ta'olam. That they fell and they um, were mapil, the entire world. U'blashon ivri, l'shon anakim hu. That they were giants. They were able to have a type of destruction on the world. Paimimahem, b'yimei dor enosh. In the time of enosh. U'bnei kain. And in the time of kain. V'gam acharechen, afal pishra'u be'ovdan shel dor enosh. Even though they saw the destruction of the generation of Enosh, Shala Okeanos Vehetzif Shlisha Olam Lo Nichna Dor Mabul Did Mabehen. So what did he say? He says during the time of Dor and Enosh, the Okeanos, the ocean, surrounded Shlisha uh, Olam, one third of the world, and it drowned them, the Dor Enosh, and they still didn't make the Shuba. So there was seemingly another another flood before before this main flood. There was another flood of Dor Enosh. And it got so bad, but they didn't make the shuva. They didn't see any change, and they didn't do any change. Asher Yavo, it says, Hayu yoldot anakim kemotam. They would give birth to, to all types of, um, uh, also giants. Hagiburim nimrod bamakom. And these giants would rebel against, against hamakom, God. Anshe Hashem, otam shenikvu b'shemot. Irad, Mechuyael, Metushael, Chinitu al Shem of Dan, Chinumoho, Behutashu, Tavarache, and Sheshimamon, Shemu et Aulam. So he's saying how these people were all giants, these people destroyed the world. Um, and this 120 years, I don't believe it's referencing the, 
time. Let's just take a look here. Hayamim sha'adich lo be'etin lo hizdamnut lachzor betshuva u'vatel kezad elon lahavi alav mamabul yu me'ah ve'esim shana. So the Radak is explaining that it's not talking about the days of the of the person who's going to be 120 in Noah. It's talking that the 120 years that from the Radak is that's going to be when the mabul is coming. You have 120 years from now, and it was 20 years before he gave birth to any children. So he says it's 120 years until he finishes the the um, teva. So he started building the teva before he had children. It seems like that's what it looks like. And then he finished it after the children were already born. And it says in one of the midrashim that we read yesterday that Hashem waited that he should have a lot of children because he didn't want his children to die in the mabul because maybe some of the children would have made Avonot, so he ended up having the children afterwards. Um, Lior, who's the oldest and the youngest of the children? The Shem, Ham, and Yafet, who's the oldest and the youngest? Yafet is the oldest. Okay, then next. No. No, Ham and Shem is the youngest. Yeah. And then? And then Ham? Ham uh, the middle. The middle? Okay. So the, there seems to be Mahlokit, but from what I found, when you look at the Pesukim of the Torah, it's Yafet is the oldest, yeah. Ham is the youngest, and Shem was the middle. But the Torah referenced it as Shem being first, because on the spiritual level, he was, the it was the Bechor on the spiritual level. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's because it mentions that Yefet HaGadol in one of the Pesukim, and it mentions that Cham was the Katan in one of them. So you, saw, you know that one being the Katan and one being the Gadol, you know that uh, Shem was in the, uh, in the center from them. So you see from this Pasuk, um, Ezra, that it was referencing the time frame of the, one, of the 120, but the, the years nonetheless were started to decrease after the time of Noah, and it reached 120 at the time of Moshe. But again, even during the time of Moshe where it said 120, there were still women and men that lived more than 120. Pinhas lived more than 120. Serach Bat Asher, she, she lived more. You have Eliyahu and Navi, you had plenty of people uh, that that lived that lived pay, way past the the uh, 120. It's just a, it was more like this is going to be the top average. Well, people superseded it? for sure. I, I remember reading about Japanese people, Gentiles that that, that superseded. It. So uh, that maybe he didn't want him to see the destruction of the world. I don't know. And what about I'm not sure. kids? They yeah, they didn't. They didn't make it on. I, they they didn't make it on. No, wow. no. Only Noah and his children made it on. It's no, so how many people on the table? You have Noah, his three children, and the three, and, and the three wives, and Noah and his wife. Okay, let's look at Og. So there's a bunch of stuff here about Og, but we'll take a look at it quickly. It's kind of interesting. How, how did Og? How did Og make it? What did Og do to make it? He's a giant. And by the way, he's not a good guy. Yeah, I know he's not a good guy because he tried to uh, take um, Abraham's wife. When he, when he went to tell Sarah Imenu that, that Isaac was going to do Akedah, what was his intention? His intention of all this was that he wanted to, to take Sarah Imenu. He was looking to get Sarah. So let's, let's take a look here. Og. Well, there's whole people, the Nephilim, they, they, didn't, they were causing tons of trouble before the generation of, of the Moors. Like, you, know, you know, it's interesting about the Nephilim, the Bnei Abdelim, when they came, these children, they the children, they came from the Shamaim. They could have been uh, Shedim, it could have been Malachim. They come down and they end up marrying women from earth. They find beautiful women, they end up marrying them, they end up having a progeny that's a quasi-human, of a quasi-alien or angel, and they exist on earth. And the Torah tells it to us outwardly. They still exist? I don't know. I don't know, but the fact that it happened, uh, why, I, why would I challenge that it's not around or it's not happened again? It, it happened once, and the Torah is telling us that this type of thing happened. So, it could be that it could happen again. Why not? Uh, let's take a look. Sichon ve'og achim hayu b'nei achia bar shem machzai masechet nida samech aleph. So, Sichon and Og were brothers. Vayavu ha'palit vayagid la'Avraham ze Og shepalat midor mabul. So it says vayavu ha'palit. He was the one from the door of mabul. Okay, that's the same Gemara. Yashablo al al etz echad min hasulamot shel teva. He sat on one of the trees on the of, on the ladder. Vinishba le noach al banam sheyu lahem eved leolam. Okay, he says I'll he'll promise to be the slave for them forever. Me asan noach. What did noach do? Nakav hor echad b'teva. He made a hole inside the teva. 
היה מושיט לו מזונו בכל יום ויום. He would feed him every day from it. What seemingly is telling me this is that there was no food around the earth. It must have been a destruction all around that, that he had to he, take food from Noah. How was he breathing? Was it inside water? I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm not sure. He so must, the water was boiling it, it was boiling hot and there was a volcano. Not, and not and, the teva, was it not, right? No. The teva had to be protected. So I'm not sure. And then, and then preserving the food. Yeah, the preserving the food. Meaning, meaning yeah. w- remember, and the, another thing that was brought down yesterday is there were no windows. That yeah. means he took stones and, and certain rocks with him inside in order to illuminate. He said he knew which rocks would illuminate at night yeah. and which during the day. Now, I know it's a tzohar ta'asel teva. I'm not talking about the tzohar. The tzohar was a stone. Some say it was a window that he put in there. It could have been for ventilation or for lights or how he sent out the bird. So there probably was a form of a window. But he actually put stones around on the floors. There were three floors in the teva. One for him and his family, one for the food, one for the animals, and, uh, um, and then also for the garbage. Three, actually. It's him and his family and the animals, the food and the garbage. He was with the animals for a year. And, it's, and what I was reading also yesterday is that he had to constantly go out and feed the animals at different random times. The lion doesn't get fed the same as a giraffe or as an ostrich. And there was one bird, and there was one bird I was reading yesterday that it says that uh, its own Noah was very busy. So he didn't bother Noah to eat. And Noah noticed he wasn't eating. Goes to show you that Noah knew all the animals and what they were eating. And he blessed that bird that it should live forever. So there's a bird that had the blessing from Noah that must be around today. Which bird was it? That's, I'll show you the name. We're reading it yesterday. Let's pull it up. It's, 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 oh, did it bother Noah? It didn't bother Noah. It was very interesting. And so um, because of that, Noah blessed it. It should live forever. Wow. So I know for sure if Noah blessed this forever, it's definitely around today. And that's for sure. I heard somebody say that the dinosaurs were too big, so he brought in dinosaur eggs. Does he have a source for that? I, I, I read something else, something interesting about the dinosaurs. It said that when you think about it, when, it, when the sun was created, right? So let's say with science, you say the dinosaurs were X millions of years old. You said the sun was created on the, on the on third day, right? So the first two, no, uh, sorry, fourth, there's no concept of time until you have the sun. So you can't, like, so it could have been a day in, in, in Bible terms, but by, our, by us, it could have been millions and millions of, of, of years that it could have been a definitely fit between the religion and science. It's like an interesting... Yeah, but but there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with with having years having years the uh, complete assumption that it's it's okay. It's five seven eight four. It's not a big yeah, deal. Yeah. I understand. I understand what you mean. That the that the, the concept of days. Because how do we know this? That the constellations were not in, uh, created until day four, sun and moon and the planets. So how do, how do you how do you calculate time without that? And it says also that a day in the eyes of God is a thousand years. Exactly. So there's a lot of different things, and it also is brought down that there was 974 generations before the creation of Earth that there were other things around. That's why when Hashem started the the first letter of the Torah, He put a bet. Why is a bet? Because a bet you can't see backwards, you can't see upwards, you can't see down, you only see forward. Because there were things here before. Hashem said, "Don't get involved in my Earth." There was things before. There are going to be things after this 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 six thousand years. That's not for you to to focus on. Focus on what you have to deal. You have seven mitzvot ben Noach. Learn how to deal with each other. Learn how to respect each other. Do the Torah mitzvot. That's your focus. Don't start to figure out what I did here in the world because you might dig and see things. And you know there's going to be a lot of investigations that you can do. So let's take a look. It says here, it's just brought down, it looks like Sanhedrin, Kuf Chet Amud Bet, Pamachat, Matzan, Noach, Ofechad. One time he, find, he found a, a bird, not a chicken. Here he's talking about bird. Shishmo Orshina. The name was Orshina or Orsina. It looks like Orshina because it's known in the Kedoshi. Did you Google it? Huh? You Google? I, I didn't Google, no. Nirdam al Sefun ha Teva. It landed on, it was on the Teva. Uh, the end of the Teva or Sefun, the, the part of the Teva, Amarla, Haim in Chat Sichot Sicham Mesonot. He said, Do you need any Mesonot, any food? Amrala, Amralo, 
I saw that you're very occupied. I don't want to bother you. He said, I'm so, I'm so happy you, you finally appreciated that I was so busy. I bless you, you're never going to die. And I told you, the berachot of Noah and of these gedolim, these sadikim, it's not the berachav, your mother-in-law on your way out. This is, this is the Kodesh Kodashim. This is, you know? It's okay. So let's take a look. Og, I, I, I find Og to be unbelievable. Also, or see now, do you see anything on that? On yeah, they say that the, the Chabad Arach says that it most likely was the phoenix. The phoenix. That's what I was thinking about the phoenix too because the phoenix, the, the phoenix is the bird that they... Uh, I'll show you a picture. Still around? No. The, the, there are phoenix birds. I don't know if it's the phoenix, the one that we're talking about from that, that Noah, but uh, let's take a look at it. What's so crazy about the phoenix? No, they're saying that that could be the phoenix and if you the notice... According, according here, this is what they, they say. This is, I mean, this is a, an art uh, picture, but this would be what they said, like that phoenix, that bird that got that blessing. Now, the phoenix is a, obviously a real bird, so it's not here. I'll show you what the phoenix looks like here. This is what the real, a real phoenix looks like. Are you saying that one that was on the table is still around? Yeah, I'm going to show you the real bird, the phoenix. One second. When he gave the blessing, when Noah gave the blessing to that bird, that, in the, that same bird is still around? Yeah, oh yeah that, yes that yes yeah take a look here this is a picture of a phoenix here, let's take a look at that beautiful picture it's really nice look at that bird it's a gorgeous bird you see it? it's like a yeah. fire bird mm-hmm. let's take a look at this if there's some other beautiful ones look for an old one. <laughs> wow this is a, look, this is a uh, look for an old one yeah it's like a take a look at that picture gorgeous bird now this this is uh, the, the in mythology yeah, they say this is the bird. We, we again I'm, I don't have any any source to prove that this phoenix is the is the uh, the bird that we're referring to here the Oris, Oris, Orishina, the Orisina, whatever it is I don't know but that's what we're looking at at it and we're discussing it we don't have for sure but that's in mythology why did he give mythology him the that, why did the Anoach give him the bracha I told you because when he saw that it was occupied he didn't he didn't, he, he didn't bother him let's take a look Og who Eliezer Eved Abraham? He says, Og is the, was Eliezer Eved Abraham. That was him. Okay. One time he got mad at him. He said, One time. Uh, he got he got scared og and teeth fell out of his mouth and abraham avinu took the teeth and made from it beds okay some say he made a chair out of the teeth he carved a chair out of the teeth wow and 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 who gave who gave to abraham og as a slave nimrod Maybe Nimrod gave it to him after he threw him in the furnace and he survived. I don't know. Pelit haya shemo. Velamikra shemo og. Why was his name og if it was Pelit? Shebo umatsa Abraham shosek beugot ha pesach. Ah, that he saw. When, when uh, og came, og sheba umatsa Abraham osek beugot pesach. He saw him doing the ugot. That was, I guess, when the when the malachim came, the three malachim. He was doing ugot matzot. No, wasn't there also? I think it was the gematria of Eliezer was the amount of soldiers that. Were yes. So that makes a lot of sense. The three eighteen, no? Yeah. That was just three eighteen. Okay. By Avoh Hapalit, by you God, Amar Lo Akadosh Baruch Hu, Sechad Pesiatcha Ata Notel Sheata Marich Yamim. So he says when he when he came og by Avoh Hapalit, and he told by Yaged. That I was saying that he got a sechad for going to walk, so he ended up getting uh, also. Uh, he was a uh, long, long days. Lo amad gibor ba'olam kashehimenu. There was nobody more powerful that ever lived than Og. Vuhunishad mina giborim shehargu amrafel lechaverav, and he was from the giborim that Amrafel left over. And his friends. So it looks like when Amrafel was the king, or had power, he went around hunting down these giants and wanted to annihilate them. He made it his mission, and he left Og. Interesting. pachot mikol beyamav. So the Rifaim looks like they were a group of people. 
and he was pachot vegarua mikol harifaim. He was worse or less. Pachot is less. Interesting. I'm not. I'm not familiar with that. Midrash Agada in Devarim Gimel Yer Aleph. Haya bria min avilat ben abriot. He was a minuval. What's that? Uh, like disgusting, l- l- low quality. Who? Um, Og. Or kavo tesha amot. His height. Or kako. It says here. Or kavo. Or kako. What? His his height was nine amot. So nine so amot. That. It's not that. It's not that tall. Nine, nine um, Moshe was ten amot. So it's interesting. Verachavu arba amot karov lechetzi orko. So nine amot is like a foot and a half in amma, right? So, like so ten fifteen to twelve feet. More? No, it was more. Maybe fifteen, sixteen feet tall. It's not that big. Verachavu arba amot, and it was four amot wide. So that's pretty wide, actually. It wasn't skinny. It was fat. It was big. Listen, what's interesting about when we read these things, some of them, they argue with each other. You, know, you read them, they don't all fit together. Because there's another Midrash that says that Moshe Rabbeinu jumped 10 Amot, and, 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 and his stick was 10 Amot, mm-hmm. and he was 10 Amot, so it was 30 Amot, and he only reached his ankle. So, should have a museum to make like a, you know, actual golden of, of what they look like. Alach Og, Ubana Shishim Ayarot. Og, by himself, went to build 60 different villages. The smallest, the smallest of the of them was sixty mil. It's unbelievable. What did he eat? Elef shorim ushtiato elef midot. He would eat one thousand shores ox. Okay. One sitting. Huh? One sitting. That's what it says. Umaya achilato, one thousand shodim, mishtiato, enef midot, vetipat zaro, and a piece of a semen, shloshim mishisha litarim. It was thirty six liters. So clearly, according to this, he must have been bigger than the previous uh, ma'amar of it. Because if a person is able to eat a thousand shores. How does he know how many liters that was? Oh, the, this is brought down in uh, Sofrim, Masechet Sofrim. How? The, the Torah knows everything. Everything's in the Torah. They, and this Og was a very unique individual that seemingly the Torah is going to have its way to tell us about it. Abba Shaul Omer, Kover Mitim Haiti. He used to bury people, Abba Shaul. Pamachat, Nechnasti the Toch Kolit Shel Met. One time he went into uh, the uh, area where someone was buried. Veratzi Shalosh Parasot, Velohigati. I ran. Three parasaot long distance, and I didn't make it. That was the cave of, of uh, Ogmen Chabashan. So you see from this one, that's in Masachet Nida Kaf Dalit, that, that you see from here that it was very, very, even he had, he was very uh, big. Hayalo ben He had a son, Og, that was even worse than him. Sichon ve Og, Hayu Shechatzim ve Giburim, Shelo Haya ben Zelaze. He said they were both Giborim, they were both brothers, and they would keep a distance of one day between them, the brothers, and this one wouldn't uh, affect this one. So it's, there's a lot, of here, a lot of stuff here going on with, with these uh, interesting Mamarot um, of Og. But uh, we'll end it with this that all we know is that Noah is a Sadiq. We, we, we follow that, this whole Ma'amad, but we have to take in consideration that the people that died in his generation were people that were, were very intelligent and they made a mistake. Their biggest mistake was that they believed that the creations of God were in charge when really it was God was controlling and still is controlling everything. And I think this is, um, this is from a little bit of the learning that we see here. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve'amen.